Hi, I'm engineer Yuri Makeda from Hazmat 34, and you are watching Report on Conditions. Hola, me llamo Ingeniero Uriel Makeda de Hazmat 34, y estamos mirando Reporto en Condiciones, Report on Conditions. On this week's Report on Conditions, we'll see a horse rescue in the Santa Ana River bottom, and our firefighters from Lake Tamarisk will get to meet a young patient they helped save. Hi, my name's Mark Shear, fire captain from Station 29 in Anza. Welcome to tonight's episode of Report on Conditions. In case you missed it, we've been in spring for a few weeks now. Have you started hardening your home? And yesterday of 113 degrees during the day, then very dry conditions. And Devastating wildfires have become the new normal in California. It is your responsibility to prepare your family, pets, home, and yourself. Preparedness starts with three steps. Ready, set, go. Step one, ready. Ready is proactive planning. Ready focuses on two areas, your home and your family. This begins with creating a defensible home. Start by creating an action plan to build defensible space. Remove weeds, brush, and other vegetation to create a buffer between flames, embers, and your home. Harden your home. Roofs, eaves, vents, and decks are areas you can safeguard against fire. Evaluate weak points and harden them. Ready is preparing your family. Start with creating a family disaster plan to leave, meet, retreat. Include pets and large animals such as horses in your plan. Being ready saves lives and property. Being ready increases the likelihood both you and your home survive. It's time to get ready. We're ready, are you ready? For additional actions and information on what to do when wildfire strikes, head to readyforwildfire.org. It's time to talk about something extremely important. Edith, exit drills in the home. First up, make a plan. Sketch out two escape routes from every room in your house. Practice makes perfect. Run through your plan regularly. And remember, once you've escaped, stay out. Head out to your meeting spot outside. Remember, staying safe starts with a plan. Prepare your exit drill in the home today. Visit rvcfire.org for more information. The day the call came out, we were uh, responding from another call that was uh, many miles north on the 177. We were just coming back. While en route, we got toned out to another call. It was reported a full arrest. After being en route for a few minutes, we got a report that this was gonna be a 10 year old. He's under a blanket that we have in the car and out of nowhere, the blanket starts shaking pretty badly maybe about for 10 seconds and it just immediately stops. Clearly I noticed that's not right, so I pulled the blanket off of him and uh, uh, I noticed he's not responding anymore. I realized something's not right. So the only thing I can think of is CPR. From there I see his grandfather in the horizon and I yell to him to come over because obviously Logan's not responding. He's not breathing. His grandfather runs over to the car. He gets in and we just take off. We go, we start heading back to the main road closest to the freeway as we can. Um, he's the one that calls 911. All I remember during that entire thing is just like pitch darkness for two seconds and then like I woke up in the hospital bed. Everybody was super involved in the call in the beginning trying to help out in any way that they could. Jen Jones did a great job just doing CPR over the phone just trying to provide any reassurance that she could. Being that we're out in a far distance in 49's area we knew the response time. We had an airship auto launched, so we got it in the air, uh, let 49s know that, and they were passed on the information to them. Alyssa was able to keep updating them. CPR was still in progress, and the location. 45 minutes away, um, we were dropped into a situation that everybody here at Cal Fire was able to hand us a really good uh, patient and a really good outcome with everything they did initially before we even got there. This, this shows what teamwork can really do for an individual. Thanks to the efforts of the family of the patient, the dispatchers and everybody involved, this patient walked out of the hospital with no deficits. CPR was incredibly important because it kept this patient alive until our crew showed up and were able to take over. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for everything. I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for her. Yeah.
Last week from March 25th through March 31st, the department responded to a total of 3,720 calls for service. This included 2,726 medical emergencies and 85 fire-related calls. Let's go check out a few of the highlighted incidents. On Tuesday, March 26th at 6.30 in the morning, firefighters responded to a semi-truck rollover on the Redlands Avenue overpass to Interstate 215 in Paris. The first arriving engine reported a big rig on its side, slowly leaking diesel fuel and oil. The engine crew stopped the leak from spreading and awaited the arrival of our hazmat crew and County Environmental Health to clean it up. Thankfully, only about 10 gallons leaked out onto the ground and was cleaned up in about three hours. There were no injuries to the driver of the truck. On Wednesday, March 27th at around 3 p.m., 911 dispatchers received several calls reporting a large pile of trash on fire near the intersection of El Nido Avenue and Walnut Avenue in the community of Nuevo. An alert trash truck operator noticed that he had a fire in the contents of his truck and dumped the load in an open field to prevent the truck from catching on fire. The first engine on scene reported a 30 by 30 pile of debris burning and quickly contained it to the pile with no extension into the vegetation or infrastructure. There were no injuries reported. On Friday, March 29th, firefighters responded to a reported house fire in the rural community of Anza. The first arriving engine reported a single story structure with an attic fire and requested an additional water tender and two more engines to respond. Firefighters contained the fire after about an hour and a half due to heavy smoke and heat damage, the structure was destroyed and the residents were displaced but declined assistance from the American Red Cross. There were no injuries reported. At around 1.45 p.m. on Sunday, March 31st, a 911 caller reported a horse that was stuck in the river bottom behind her house. The first arriving engine made access to the river bottom area and located the horse without a rider. Due to the inclement weather and conditions in the river bottom, it was decided to utilize a helicopter to hoist the horse out of the river. With the help of the City of Riverside Fire Department and their animal rescue team, as well as Norco Animal Rescue Team, our firefighters were able to get the horse prepped and ready to fly. Riverside County Sheriff's Helicopter Rescue 9 lifted the horse out of the river bottom and reunited him with his caretaker. Thankfully, the horse, Conquistador, did not sustain injuries and was happy to pose for a picture with our Water Rescue Task Force team members. That's all for this week's report on conditions. Follow your firefighters in action on our social media, at CALFIRERU, and stay up to date on incidents happening countywide. If you caught any great footage of our firefighters at work or out in the community, send them to us at RRU, PIO at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department, I'm Fire Captain Mark Shear. Thanks for watching.